Because in this video, we're going to review what you did in your Nova Lab missions uh, to see if you did it correctly and you understood what was going on. So in these missions, the three that you did, you were to create cladograms and use either morphology or DNA to help you create those cladograms. The whole point of these is to show how organisms are related to each other, how recent was their common ancestor, how distant do they have ancestors, how closely are they related. Another big idea that you should have gotten from this is the idea that all life on the planet shares a distant common ancestor and that we can trace all life on our planet back to a single-celled prokaryote ancestor from way back in the past. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to go one mission at a time, so each video will be a different mission. So we're going to start with mission number one. All right, in the first one, we have two different organisms that clearly are not recently uh, related. So they don't share a recent common ancestor. But once again, if we follow life all the way back um, through time, we're going to find that they do share a very, 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 very distant common ancestor. So here, looking at this, we have a trait that they share in common. Both have cells with a nuclei. All right, now we add in our fungus here. And a lot of people think of fungus more like a plant, um, but what we find out is uh, fungi are actually more like animals. So if we take a look here, we zoom in and we can look at, at each of the different traits and stuff, learn about these organisms. Um, but when we drag these up here, we're going to want to drag it towards the animal here. So we want to add some additional traits that apply to these organisms. Right here goes the photosynthetic autotroph, which is a plant, the palm tree here. And then over here on this side, what they have in common is that they are both heterotrophs. So which organism is, a, is fungi more uh, closely related to? It's actually animals than plants. All right, taking a look at these organisms here. Again, you want to find your outgroup, the organism that is most different from all the rest. So in this case, we have a mammal, a fish, a reptile, and an insect. I would say these guys are more closely related um, than these guys here. So this would be my outgroup, so I put it first. And then I think of uh, the evolution of life on the planet. Uh, next would be fish, followed by reptiles, and then finally mammals. Okay. So that's how I would create my cladogram here. Then I want to look at the traits that distinguish at each of these branching, these speciation events, um, to see what traits they had in common. What trait will every organism past that have because they share a common ancestor? And that's the key here. So right there, remember, that's a recent common an or a common ancestor that they shared before branching occurred. Here, this is a branching event uh, in which speciation occurred and fish went this way and then this line evolved into our reptiles and our mammals here. Um, and then here this was a branching event that separated insects from all the rest of these. So from here down at the very bottom before this ancestor split to form all these different uh, species here what did they all have in common? Something that every organism has in common. So here it's bilateral symmetry. So every single organism's ha organism has bilateral symmetry that we see here. Next, after this event, what do every organism that goes past this point, before they, they branch off here, before this branching event, before this speciation event, what do all of these guys have in common? So the answer here is that they have a vertebrae. So they all have a vertebrae, every single one of these here. And then after this branching event, before we had an ancestor that branched into reptiles and mammals here, what is something that this ancestor had that everything after it also has? And that's an amniote, that they actually have eggs, okay? so that they use eggs, sperm and eggs, in order to reproduce. So looking at these organisms, what do they all have in common? That would go back here. So this ancestor way, way back had bilateral symmetry. That's why everything past that has bilateral symmetry. Next, taking a look at this one. Uh, once again, look at your groups here, and you want to find your outgroup. So I would say seaweed would probably be the outgroup here. Okay. Um, then I'd want to think, okay, what evolved next? Okay. I'm just gonna kind of guess at this. I'm gonna say radishes seem kind of more primitive than others to me. Uh, followed by onions, 
followed by lemons, and then I'm going to assume bananas are the most recent branch off here. Okay. Um, once I have all of this set up, now I'm going to put my traits in here. So what do all of these have in common? Something that the ancestor, before it started branching off to form all these uh, different species here, what do they all have in common? So I'm going to say photosynthetic autotroph, something that they all share. Um, next, I want to take a look and see which of these produce spores underwater. Let me say the seaweed, right? Because none of these produce spores underwater. Okay, so far, so good. Um, from right here at this point, what do all of these guys have in common? I'm going to say that they all produce flowers. Let's see if that is correct. So good. And then petals of three and petals of four or five. Hmm. So now as we start to take a look at this, we want to try to make this work. Um, let's say we're missing a trait here. So I'm going to say that these, a couple of these are probably related. So I'm going to move the onion and say he's more related here. And then I'm going to say these guys have petals of three and these guys have petals of four or five for their flowers. Ah, okay. So this works for petals of four or five work for the lemon, petals of, of three work for the onion, but doesn't work for the banana, doesn't work for the radish. So I'm going to switch them to show their, their differences in relatedness. I'm going to move the banana with the onion and I'm going to move the radish with the lemon. Let's see if that works. And there we go. Okay. Um, so again, you're looking at, from this point on, any species past this point, because this common ancestor here produced flowers, everything's going to produce flowers past that point. Here, this branching event, this common ancestor had petals with multiples of three, so every descendant from it is going to have multiples of three. And then here, petals with multiples of four or five, descendant there. So is a banana more closely related to a lemon or an onion? The answer is an onion, which surprises a lot of people. All right, so that's it for mission one.